Hey, we're talking about arm care today, especially as it pertains to the quarterback position. But essentially everything we talk about today can be transferred to any overhead sport or any sport that relies on throwing or hitting in an overhead uh, fashion. So before we start uh, this series, which we're gonna dig into scapular stabilization, training the rotator cuff group, um, even recovery or preparation for, for, for practice or a throwing session, there's a couple different aspects that we can really uh, capitalize on that will put us and lay a great foundation and put us in a great position uh, for when we can really get specific with taking care of our arm. So the first thing we're gonna talk about here is to take care of my arm, I want to be involved in some sort of consistent and holistic type training, training program, okay? Things that include uh, squats, hinges, pushes and pulls, some sort of weighted carry or bracing. A program like that is gonna allow me to be uh, extremely holistic in my approach as I'm training my body as an athlete, as opposed to single muscle groups. But it's also gonna allow me to have um, be robust to be able to handle the demands of my position, okay? Also, outside of just standard resistance training, those five groups that I mentioned, the squat, the hinge, the push, the pull, carry or brace, whatever you'd like to call it, I'd like to be involved in some sort of ballistic type training as well. That could maybe um, some sort of variation of our Olympic lifts. It could be throwing med balls. It could be jumping using plyometrics. Whatever it is, something that is really intentionally putting me in a very dynamic um, type movement. Okay. The next thing that we'd like to think about is we're athletes. We need to run. We need to have a mixture of sprints, both short and longer type sprints, acceleration and max velocity sprints. We also need to condition, okay? So step one, we want to be involved in some sort of holistic type training program that trains me as an athlete first, not just a thrower or a quarterback, okay? Number two, I need to throw, okay? So in sport, especially as we're planning preparation, what we try to do is avoid spikes in workload. It doesn't matter if I'm running, if I'm a thrower, or if I'm just swinging some sort of implement, what we typically like to avoid is going from zero or a small value to a great big value, okay? That spike is where uh, the, the, a little bit higher risk of injury could, could exist. So if I'm a thrower and I throw routinely, consistently over time, and then I increase my workload, there's not as much of a dramatic spike there. So if I'm a thrower, I wanna find a way to throw consistently. And if I'm a football, if I'm a quarterback, it doesn't mean that I always have to throw a football. Maybe I switch the size of ball, maybe I switch the ball altogether. But the, the lesson here is I need to throw. I'm a throwing athlete and I need to keep some sort of baseline uh, throwing routine throughout the year. It could be a little bit higher as we're in season and in the off season a little bit lower, but let's keep the arm um, you know, throwing and active. The next thing, we need to eat breakfast. Okay, We talk all the time about starting fast. It doesn't matter if I'm going to work one day, I need to hit the ground running. Positive attitude, I'm starting fast, I'm gonna attack the day. Or if I hit the, the practice field, I need to start that practice fast. As soon as my cleats hit the ground, a game. As soon as uh, the first snap occurs, I'm, f I'm starting fast. So in life, in everything we're doing as an athlete, I need to start fast with breakfast. When we're thinking about breakfast too, we have wonderful dietitians that's, that are talking about this daily. You know, big time breakfast, eggs, some sort of carb, some sort of fruit with some milk. Then I have all the things that I need. So the third element is I'm gonna get up daily and I'm gonna eat breakfast. The third, I'm gonna sleep. Not just, or I'm sorry, the fourth, not just sleep. I'm gonna make sure that I'm consistent in my habits. I'm making sure my environment is dark, is cool, and is quiet. That's gonna allow me to maximize my opportunity to have great sleep. But over time, when I sleep, that allows me to get up and get going the next day. So the fourth element is I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna sleep. The final element, and it's super, super simple, is I'm gonna hydrate always, okay? So throughout my day, I'm gonna have some sort of water bottle, okay? It's gonna be specific to me. I may have a couple. It could be a Gatorade bottle. It could be a Nalgene bottle. It could be a refillable or a reusable bottle that we just get out of a, uh, a vending machine. But I'm always gonna carry my bottle. 
if I always have my bottle, I'm more apt to actually hydrate, okay? So the fifth element is always hydrating through the day, and we can do that by carrying my water bottle. So when we try to take care of our arm as a quarterback position or some sort of thrower with a position with, with a sport, okay, there are some intricacies to taking care of our arm. You know, we're gonna dig into some different aspects as it pertains to the small musculature inside of my shoulder, around the scap, which oftentimes thought of as the anchor point of my shoulder, even types of mobility as it pertains to the front side of my body, my pec, everything about it is somewhat intricate. But the foundation of taking care of my arm, the foundation of taking care of myself as an athlete are the simple things. So in this right now, to take care of my arm, the very foundation, we're gonna start with training. I wanna be consistent, I wanna be intentional. It needs to be holistic. I am a thrower, I am gonna throw the football. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna eat breakfast. I'm gonna prioritize sleep. And I'm gonna carry a water bottle.